these days a lot we are seeing that so many new vehicles are coming almost every month you can see at least one new model is coming what is the reason why it is so happening that the models are coming and all are very good so here comes the importance of apqp advanced product and quality planning in march 2024 the third edition of apqp was published the main objective of apqp is that how we can align ourselves with the present time with the change in the expectation of the customer with innovation and with electric vehicle autonomous driving coming how can the standard adapt to the latest thing that's why apqp third edition is published one of the most important aspect of apqp is to have the understand the voice of the customer when i say voice of the customer it means that what the customer is expecting now it can be tier one it can be tier two it can be oem or it can be the end customer that what is their expectation once the organization understand their expectation the apqp helps to inculcate all those things to make sure that whatever product that is coming out that is fulfilling to all the requirements of that now when we talk about apqp one of the very important aspect is that that we are just trying to see that in any manufacturing sector especially in the automotive sector how the planning is done with respect to the new product development and how we are making sure that whatever we are planning it is converted into a useful product now if we see more in detail there can be many reasons that why apqp needs to be implemented in any company like Say for example, it simplifies the process. It makes the things very easier for the organization to see the entire development process so that they can effectively do the needful. Then second important thing is it reduces the risk early. Rather than waiting that some problem is going to come, it helps to make sure that we identify the risk. Then supplier collaboration becomes very important. There's a lot of dependency for any organization with respect to supplier. Depending on the size of the organization, it can vary from say 20, 30 to 200 if we talk about the OEM. So the supplier collaboration plays a very important role. Then the next important reason is with respect to the digital tools utilization, that how we can use all those tools so that we can do the effective planning and execution for that. And the last important aspect is with respect to ensuring the consistent quality from design to delivery that whatever we have thought of designing whether it has finally come into the final product or not that becomes important now one very important question is that whether the five phases are still there or any change in that so the answer is yes still there are five phases the first phase is talking with respect to plan and define the second phase is talking with respect to the product design and development. The third phase is talking about process design and development. The fourth phase is talking with respect to the product and process validation. And the fifth phase is talking primarily with respect to the feedback, assessment and the connectivation. Because the intent is that whatever we have done in phase one to phase four, what has happened to that and what needs to be done so that the final product which is going to the customer meets all the requirements. Now that brings another important question that what are the key changes? Now if you see from second edition which came in 2008 to the third edition which has come in March 2024, small and big there are minor many changes but I am going to talk about the seven key changes with respect to that. So let's go through that one by one. The first change is talking primarily with respect to the risk management. Now risk management was earlier also but now that has become central to the entire APQP planning. Whatever things we are doing in any of the five phases, we are always looking at that what can be the possible risk and what organization can do to mitigate or to avoid all those risks. The second aspect is talking with respect to the control plan. Now, so far in the first edition and second edition, control plan was an integral part of APQP, but now there is a separate edition with respect to the control that is called first edition which was published in March 2024. The third one is talking primarily with respect to the gate reviews. Now the review was earlier also but now it's more systematic in a more planned manner and there are six different gates. The first gate is with respect to the pre-planning and then there are five phases. So each gate there is a review that whatever has been planned whether it has been executed or not. If not then we go back and correct that and then we move to the next process. 
the next key change is primarily with respect to the stronger focus on communication as i talked about that supplier communication is very important collaboration with the supplier is very important so that has been given a lot of importance in this particular manner then the next is primarily with respect to the high risk supplier evaluation again linking with the supplier now there is a separate checklist where there are 78 different points about selection of the supplier the main objective is that for any organization especially if we talk in context of an oem there are approximately 200 to 300 suppliers which are there so what can be the possible risk and how to make sure that when we are selecting a supplier they are as per the expectation of the organization then the next key change is primarily with respect to the safe launch now the here the intent is that after the mass production has started and before the product is handed over to the operation so that now they can do the regular production the safe launch is primarily talking about seeing it one more time that whatever has been done in the APQP whether it has been done effectively or not or in case there is an issue what can be done with respect to that and the last is talking with respect to the traceability now again traceability is not a new requirement but now in this APQP third edition a lot of focus has been given with respect to the traceability there is a separate annexure which is talking in detail that what is the importance of traceability and how a traceability can be done in the entire supply chain so these are the seven key changes in this APQP third edition now let's move next that what are the key benefits if an organization effectively implements AQB third edition well talking about some of them the first one is as I said earlier it prioritizes the resources utilization that whatever resources are there because resources are always critical always less and very expensive how we can use them effectively then second is about detecting the issues earlier rather than waiting that the problem is going to come from the customer why not identify it earlier and take action on that the third one is talking with respect to how we can manage the risk better we all know that customer is not willing to accept any defect or any problem so what we can do with respect to that then the next one is with respect to enhancing the customer value there's so much of competition I think any company which is coming up with any two wheelers three wheelers and four wheelers all are good quality so what we can do so that we can make the customer feel that yes their vehicle is the best so APQP helps in that entire process and the last one is with respect to avoiding the last minute changes in firefighting because often it happens that when we do something in the last minute realizing that something we have missed there is always a possibility that we are going to make some compromise there so that can be avoided then another question which generally comes is that where, where we can use the APQP. So primarily there are two places where we can use APQP. The first one is with respect to the new development of any process or any product. And the second is with respect to any engineering change. Any change which is happening in the process or product at that time we can use APQP. Depending upon that how much time we need to give that we can decide with respect to that. What are the key benefits of it? So as I said earlier, repeated again also, it helps with respect to the supplier collaboration. It helps to reduce the cost and efforts of solving problems early. We can take better decision with respect to QCD, quality, cost and delivery. And lastly, certainly it helps to capture the valuable knowledge for the future project. That what are the things gone wrong, what are the things gone right. We can make a history of that and can use that in future. So if I do a summary, APQP primarily is a tool for early detection it's a tool which we can use as a preventive tool so that whatever problems that are going to come in future we can envisage that and we can take action with respect to that this new addition has come primarily to understand what are the possible risks with electric vehicle coming autonomous driving coming so what are the key changes which are there to have that language with digitalization increasing how we can make it relevant for the today's time so all these are the reasons that why APQP third edition is there well my next video will again be with respect to APQP where I'm going to talk about the first phase which is about the planning of APQP regularly I'm getting a lot of feedback from your side and they are helping you to understand your expectations so please do continue that in case you want to understand a little bit more about this particular video, you will find a link below. If you click that, you will find a blog there and there you find this information in much more detail. And in case you are liking these kind of blogs and videos, you can always subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can always share it with your friends and colleagues.
माई डियर फ्रेंड्स आई हैव अनदर चैनल कॉल लाइफ लेसन विद भव्य मंडला इट इज ऑल अबाउट लाइफ एंड एक्सपेक्टेशन सो इन केस यू वॉन्ट टू लर्न लिटल बिट मोर अबाउट इट यू कैन गो एंड हैव अ लुक एट दैट चैनल सो थैंक यू